Hi guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. Uh, so today we're going to continue with one of the assets that we were working on throughout our live stream. And uh, yeah, this is said in the live stream that we had on the, on Wednesday, we were working on this very cool uh, like candle lamp that it's on our lighthouse scene. We're eventually going to add it to lighthouse scene, but we managed to get like a really, really nice render. Let me show you here real quick. I'm going to pause while this renders. There we go. So it's rendering now. I'm using GPU. The samples are a little bit high. We can change that in just a second to, to have like less samples first and then we'll, we'll go back to this one. I'm using two imagers. We talked about this. If you want to see this a little bit more in depth, go back to the to the live stream. It was at the end of the of the live stream where we were uh, playing around with that with render settings. And, and this is what we have. So there's a couple of things I want to do. First, I want to delete this lamp right here. I actually just want to have two lamps because I, I think this is uh, becoming a little bit too noisy. Like having two lamps so close together doesn't really make sense, right? Um, and uh, and we're gonna do this sort of like, a, I wanna do like a castle wall. I know this word for the for the original, um, what's the word? For the lighthouse, but I think it will be, it look very cool if we had like a brick wall. And we're gonna be talking about uh, displacement, of course. So for those of you that don't know about displacement, uh, displacement is this thing that we do um, when we actually divide or subdivide the geometry at render time and then push and pull the different vertices to create shapes. We have two ways to fake this, bump map and normal map, which work really nice, but this is the, the actual way to do it when you when you really want to create the geometry. Is it expensive? Yes, because you're going to have the extra geometry um, on, the, on, on render time. So it will be a little bit more expensive on render time, but it will give you this amazing, amazing results. So in this case, since I want to keep this as accessible as possible for everyone, we're going to be using, again, Polyhaven. And we've used these guys before. So uh, we're going to select, like, uh, like this is great. <laughs> I mean, what else could we ask? This brick wall is amazing. Look at this. This looks really, really cool. There's a lot of uh, displacement thing going on. So very important here on how we download it or download the things that we need. Uh, as you can see, we can get the Blender file, we can get this GLTF file, but I'm actually going to get the maps to show you how to connect everything properly. Very, very, super, super, super important. The displacement map has to be on EXR. It's the best possible one because it's going to give you the best or the, the highest resolution. So EXR for the displacement, please. Diffuse for um, your diffuse map. And then this ambient location roughness metallic. It can be a JPEG, that's fine. Uh, normal map, um, Maya normally uses um, the um, OpenGL, so we can do OpenGL, we can do EXR, and that's and that's perfectly fine. So I'm just going to download. And once we download, you're going to get the zip folder. While well, that thing is downloading, let me open our projects. I'm going to go to source images. Let's create a new folder. Let's call this brick wall. Let's open this thing and drop this, oh, drop this in here. There we go. So we could use the Substance uh, plugin to plug some of these elements into the into a new material. But I think in this case, since we're doing something a little bit more, I wouldn't say it's super advanced, but it's a little bit more tricky, I'll, I'll do this manually so that everyone can follow. So we're going to create a new material. So I'm going to go Arnold and Shaders. And we're going to look for the AI standard surface, which is the basic material. I'm going to rename this M underscore. I like to use the M underscore like naming convention uh, brick wall. And here we're going to start plugging things in. So uh, one of the cool things about Maya, I think Blender has this as well, is you can just uh, drag and drop the textures. So... So brick wall, we'll just grab all of these guys and drag and drop, and they will clear, create like the nodes that we need. So that's the normal map. This is the uh, occlusion roughness metallic. This is the diffuse. And this is the displacement, which is going to be very important. So let's start with the basic maps. We know this one's already. We've done this a million times. Uh, the out color of the color goes into the base color. Um, the normal map, which is this one right here, we have two options. I really like using the AI normal uh, node. So I'm going to use the AI normal. The color goes into the input and the out value goes into the normal camera. And that's going to give us the normal map. We're not going to see it here because we're, we're uh, using the render. So it's going to be on the render. And then this one, this is very important because remember, this one has uh, three values. It has metalness, roughness, and occlusion. 
each on the RGMB channel. So it's R for ambient occlusion, G for uh, roughness, and B for metallic. As you can see, there's no blue, there's only uh, red and green. So the red, which is amb ambient occlusion, we're not gonna be using it right now. Uh, we could multiply it against the diffuse to get like a little bit darker effects, but I don't think we need it. And we're only gonna use the G on the specular roughness. Uh, very important, I'm gonna grab this guy right here and we're gonna change the color space to a raw because that's the that's the proper uh, thing that we need to have for this uh, particular because it's a, it's a black and white image so we don't want any color um, like inputs over there. We're gonna grab the wall, assign the existing material and we're gonna do brick wall and there we go. Now, first thing that I notice is that the wall is way, way, way too big. Like the texture of the wall is way, way too big. Two options here. We can uh, change the UV map or uh, just tile this texture. And I think tiling is going to be the best option. So we're going to go to this one and let's say three, 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 and three, and three, and three. So now we have three tilings and you can see that the, that the bricks are like closer to a size that I would uh, recommend or expect. Let's do a quick test. Let's save real quick and let's do a test. So um, the whole image is going to become darker. And the reason is right now we have this like gray wall. And even though it's it has no color, it is balancing certain like texture to everywhere else. So by making it a dark uh, wall, everything is going to become a little bit uh, darker. So yeah, that, that looks that looks okay. Not bad, you can see the normal map there doing its work, trying its best to, to look as nice as possible. But as you can see, it, it's not it's not looking great, right? Like it, it looks okay, it, it looks nice, but it's, it's not great. So how can we uh, improve this? Well, first of all, I think I'm gonna add like another light. I don't know, I, I'm tempted to add like, a, like, a, like the moonlight, like feeling the scene a little bit, let's try. So I'm gonna go lights, area light. And I'm just gonna do like a, like a soft, I want to have like a soft blue light coming from the, from the top. So let's do like a 15 exposure. Am I rendering? No. More than, oh, okay. Yeah, very important that things are named different. So let's call this moonlight. There we go. Uh, use color temperature and we're going to bring this higher so that it's really, really cold. And let's do render. Okay, let's do, of course, render from our shot cam. Is it camera one? Nope. Is it camera two? There we go. So, yeah, that looks a little bit nicer. And, I mean, it at least brings some, like, extra light to the scene, some extra glares. That's, that's cool. But it's a little bit too much, so let's bring this down to, like, a 12. Mm, 13. Yeah, 13 looks okay. So as you can see, we get this nice, like soft light coming from the, from the top. And that's also gonna help the normal map in this case to, to define a little bit more because we have several like directions and the shadows on the normal maps are gonna look a little bit better. So cool, um, we have this. Now it's time to we add our displacement map. And there's a couple of steps that you need to do to add a displacement map. First on the shader, you are gonna have to use something called an AI displace or a displacement node. This one right here is the displace shader, okay? So this displacement shader is gonna be connected, as you can see, to the displacement node of your main shader up here. So I'm gonna connect it, and then we don't need this one anymore. And over here, we do have an AI, uh, 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 I don't remember if we have a displacement map or if we just need to get this color, we just need, in this case, the red channel into the displacement of the object, okay? So you might say, okay, things are plugged in. That means that it's gonna work. Yes and no. If I hit displacement now, you're gonna see that probably our wall is gonna disappear or move to like a weird location. Yeah, there we go. So what's happening here is uh, we need to add more divisions to this wall so that it knows that it needs to push all of the different elements to different positions. So I'm gonna select this guy. I'm gonna go to Arnold and down here, I'm gonna go to subdivision. I'm gonna change the subdivision to something called Catmut Clark. Go Catmut Clark, and we're gonna add, let's say, three subdivisions. So what this will do is, at render time, it will smooth this thing three times, which means, let me duplicate this thing, that something like this is gonna happen. It's gonna do mesh, smooth once, mesh, smooth twice, mesh, smooth three times. We're gonna get this super, super dense mesh at render time, so that we don't have to worry about it here on our viewport. 
And, and that iterations that we have right there, that's again, the, the amount of times that we're gonna do that. We also have here on the displacement shader, the scale, which we need to modify, or we're gonna need to modify. So in this case, I'm actually gonna do the render, but I'm gonna do it from the perspective so that we can see how things are working a little bit better. So let's do a quick render. And there we go. Uh, let me change the light so that we can see it again. Let's do like two. So you can see that now the displacement is working. It is actually pushing the stone to different like uh, uh, points in space. Uh, we, we still need a little bit more resolution because you can see it looks really, really soft uh, still. So we're gonna go back here, let's say five divisions, quite a bit. I mean, for this point, it might not be that much, but just be careful, don't don't go overboard with these things right here because uh, you might uh, crash your, your computer. Let me actually save this. But now you're gonna see with five divisions, since we have more uh, range, you're gonna see that the points are a little bit more well-defined. So instead of looking like this blobby surface, it starts looking a little bit closer to, to, the, to the stones that we have. The problem, of course, or another one of the problems that we have is that it's pushing way, way too much. So the displacement is being way too aggressive. That thing you're going to modify on this, uh, on the on the displacement shader right here, on this scale thing. So if we go to like 0.1, for instance, we're going to bring back the displacement all the way to 0.1. And now, as you can see, we're seeing our, um, our lamps back in, in position because we're only pushing uh, the rock or the brick walls a little bit. And again, they are changing silhouette, like they are changing the, the silhouette of the object. It's now going to be less noticeable because, of course, the object is less less intense. Now, another thing, uh, you guys remember that we did a tiling of 3x3? Three three? Well, we need to do the tiling here as well. We forgot to do that. That's why it's looking a little bit weird over here. But now when we render, since this is tiling three times, you're going to see how this detail is now nicely applied to all of the different positions of our of our rocks. So look at that. Super, super clean and nice rocks. Can we push this even further? Like make them uh, make this thing go even further to to give us more detail? Yes, of course. But it, it's not really necessary. I think this point one is more than enough. Uh, or maybe maybe it, it, it might be a little bit too much even. So let me stop this. I'm gonna bring this back uh, to minus two, the exposure of the of the image, and we're gonna go to uh, our uh, camera camera shape one, which was our, our basic render camera. Oh, no, sorry, it was not this one, it was camera shape two. There we go. So now, now this looks like something, right? Because we're actually seeing the displacement on this thing. Now, remember, we have a, uh, we did a, a little bit of, um, what's the word? With a little bit of uh, depth of field. So that's why this thing is, is like uh, blurred a little bit. If the depth of field is way, way too much, very easy way to solve that. Let's go to camera two. And on the focal depth on the uh, Arnold options, I think we had like a 0.1, let's do 0 0.05. So half of the of what we had. So now we should see a little bit more detail on the our rocks, especially on this ones. And look at this, like the, the rocks now, since the geometry is there, they're reacting to the light in the way that we would expect. And we would have this very, very interesting um, effect. So yeah, that that's pretty much it. I don't think I changed the samples on the image, right? So no, we still have adaptive sampling turned on. I think I'm gonna bring this up a little bit to like zero on the on the uh, exposure. No, it's way too much. Let's do let's do like a minus one only because I do want a little bit more light. I think it looks a little bit too dark in general. There we go. Yeah, that that looks a lot nicer. You know what? Maybe bring the the extra light that we added, like the moonlight. Let's bring this pusher just one stop higher at 14. There we go. That that's interesting. Now one thing we can do with the with the area light is I like the intensity, but I don't like this going all the way down. I would like to have just like on the on the upper side. So since this is like a physical light, we can just start like moving it up a little bit more. And now only the upper area of our of our scene is gonna have that sort of uh, that sort of effect, sort of uh, element. And uh, that's it, guys. This is this is uh, just a quick uh, overview. Again, we, we've done this before, but it's always good to um, to to do a little bit of uh, what's the word? I forgot the word. Just to go over things again to make sure that we have them right. So try this. Try uh, doing this sort of like wall thing, and and I think you guys are gonna have a lot of fun. Now, one thing I want to do is I want to do a quick animation. So I'm gonna select my camera two panels. Look to select it. And then I'm going to say panels, tear off copy. And I just want to do like a five second animation, like a, like a little pan. Like you would expect, uh, I'm expecting to see this in sort of like a, like an Oliver Twist uh, movie, you know, 
the the setting up of the scene so you 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 see this thing and then you just hear like some footsteps like tup, 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 walking around and then you switch cameras right so it's just like a five second element where you see this things like uh shining so i'm gonna grab this thing i'm gonna go to frame one hit s and then let's go to frame 120 that's five seconds at 24 frames per second and i'm, I'm taking a look at this other camera just to give it a small smooth like transition so that we see the the other lamp right here so there we go. Now let's just take a look at the at the second render, uh, so at, at this render to make sure that this this uh, take or this element looks nice. Yeah, looks nice. We could even see like a shadow going through the through the wall. That would be interesting. We would need to animate something uh, something else. But yeah, that's it. So now uh, we have like several takes here, several points, and this is like a like a nice little animation. Um, yeah. I don't know. I'm thinking about rendering this animation. I don't think I can render it right now because I still have some <laughs> some things to do and, and that will take all of my, all of my computer's time. Uh, but yeah, this is it, guys. Hopefully you like this uh, video. Let me know what you think in the comments. I think I think it looks quite nice. Um, and um, as you can see, it's just, this was just like a two and a half hours of work. We did the modeling, we did the texturing, and then we have this. This could be a portfolio, portfolio piece, by the way. It's a simple one, uh, but it, it, it works. It shows that you know uh, your way around the lights, texturing, modeling, the basic things that you need to know as a, as a 3D artist. So yeah, that's it, guys. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, leave us comments with more things that you want us to cover, and I'll be happy to do so. Oh my God. Tomorrow is um, Sunday, so tomorrow we'll probably be working on some uh, more of the lighthouse. Um, I saw that we still have a lot of, of work there to do. So yeah, hang on tight, and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.